Back in that time when I was trying to figure out what Nine Inch Nails was going to be about, there was someone that was vitally important to me that was a huge inspiration. And it is with great pleasure and honor I present to you Gary Newman. It's an amazing thing to go through that every day I'm getting more and more famous and I'm becoming this massive pop star and it just, the whole world just suddenly seems to be opening up. He came up with a whole unique idea. The whole sound was pushed into that area which was exactly where it needed to be at that time. Three albums at the top 20 at the same time, two pairs of singles and albums, number one at the same time in the UK, number one records all around the world. It was a fantastic roller coaster ride and it hit astonishing peaks. There are few artists that can really claim to be a pioneer. Adored by his fans and vilified by the press, electro pop forerunner Gary Newman burst into the charts in 1979, changing the face of popular music forever and going on to become one of the most sampled, covered and influential acts of the last 30 years. This is the story of the highs, the lows and his reinvention. We wanted to hate him. You know, we'd been grafting away writing songs since we were 16. We were like, where did he come from? It was music that I'd never heard before because it had a, it had a darkness and an, an iciness to it. I was almost afraid to like it. This unique new sound evolved from the unlikeliest of places. Gary's career began against the backdrop of the London punk scene of 1979, where the fledgling artist and his band Tubeway Army were signed to emerging record label Beggar's Banquet. I've been signed by Beggar's as a little three-piece punk band and um, went to the studio to do that give them their punk album and um, and that's when I found the synthesizers and it sounds great and that was me done really that was probably me done for the rest of my life in many respects and it, it gave me that sense of direction I suppose sense of purpose that I hadn't really had before so it's really lucky that I found it the first morning of my first ever day of recording my first ever album, you know, very lucky. And, um, and I hadn't really wanted to do punk anyway, but I was, I'd done that to get the contract. And so I had to convert the songs very quickly from, you know, guitar type things into synth type things. It's a quirky little thing, you know, it's, I don't think it's the best piece of music in the world, but it, it was very, very early days. You know, synthesizers were just becoming more common. Up until then, you know, you, they were quite hard to find. You went to a music shop and it was guitars and pianos and things like that, but you didn't see synthesizers. Brilliant. It, it felt as if you were, you, were, you were just... If I just stumbled across something at just the right moment. The electro slant to the Tubeway Army album would bring Gary to the attention of Radio 1 DJ John Peel, who began championing his music as Gary started work on his next album, Replicas. Replicas, not all of it, but much of it was written as a keyboard album, written on piano, down in the park, and our friends Electric and those sort of songs, they were all written on piano, uh, with the intention of, when I got to the studio, adding the electronics to them. So it was the first time I'd, I'd written songs with the, this electronic sort of future in, in mind. It was all based on little short stories that I've been writing about this future time and it kind of had a theme to it and more thought about more cohesive than the first one it felt as if I was moving forward and it did feel like it was a better album
When Replicas was being recorded, I remember going down and hearing some early sessions, and it was already sounding pretty different then. I heard songs like, like Down in the Park then for the first time, which were obviously very, very different to anything on the first time. I'm very excited, quite frankly. Um, but I think what I remember most clearly is they had like an extra three days at the end of the sessions in the studio in Portobello Road. And that was the first time I heard Our Friends Electric. And I don't think Our Friends existed in any form until they went into that studio. And when I heard Our Friends Electric, I said immediately, that's got to be a single. It's, it's too long and it's not single shaped, but it's so great, it's got to be a single. <laughs> song proved to be Gary's unlikely breakout hit, launching him into the charts and establishing his alienated persona in the public consciousness. Changed my life, my friend Electric. Actually, two songs stuck together, a chorus of one and a verse of another, and I couldn't think I had to finish either of them, so I put them together by accident one day. Uh, there's even a bum note in there, which I thought sounded better than the note I'd written, so I kept it. And it, and it that's what it does and changes your whole life. So, you know, full marks for accidents. It was an extraordinarily different sounding record. It, it was as different as Good Vibrations by the Beach Boys was or A White Shade of Pale by Proko Haran when they were number one. It just came out of nowhere. And I think it's, it's one of the greatest number ones ever because it's so completely original. With his profile rising, Gary was invited to perform on both the Old Grey Whistle Test and Top of the Pops an invitation that would prove pivotal in shaping the public's perception of Gary. You know, I hate to ask, but the friend's electric. Only my sprung down. And now I've no one to love. Well, what was really unusual about those two TV shows was having them both together, because normally if you were a pop artist, you were on Top of the Pops, if you were a rock artist, you were on Whistle Test, and ne'er the twain should meet. But to do both of them, and to do them both in the same week, and to do them with such a stylized presentation as, as Gary had conceptualized by this point, just uh, hit the world. Gary's innovation was not just confined to his unique sound. The carefully constructed image, at odds with contemporary fashions, added to his appeal, leading his fans to emulate his fashions and makeup. The attention to presentation would prove to be a recurring theme in Gary's career, with a series of powerful and striking looks. Remember I am human. Remember I feel just like you. I would say that, that he based himself on a, on a sort of a, a David Bowie persona, as, as we all did, uh, but he, he, he took one of the, the sort of colder ones, and that fitted the music, and that was great. Remember I could end all this. Possibly one of the reasons why Gary hooked on to the kind of Our Friends Electric robotic angle for music was that it allowed him to present himself in a way where he didn't have to have a direct kind of star fan interaction. He could play the robot man. With both Our Friends Electric and Replica's number one in the single and album charts, Gary returned to the studio. Being the sole creative force behind Tubeway Army, he opted to release this next album under his own name. The Pleasure Principle further experimented with synthesized sounds, pushing the electronic sound to the forefront and featuring the groundbreaking hit, Cars. Cars, quickest song I ever wrote. About 10 minutes from start to finish, including the lyrics, I think, maybe 15 at the most. Been hugely successful for me. It's a really awkward song to actually perform, especially on TV, because all the singing happens in about the first 60, 90 seconds or so. Then you've got another minute and a half where you've got nothing to do but just try to look interesting, yeah? <laughs> it's horrible. Horrible. We used to dread that moment. 